Next up, I'm really pleased to invite Aidan Scheim to the stage uh, to, to announce the winner of the Brooklyn McNeil Ray of Hope Award, sponsored by the Centre on Drug Policy Evaluation. Thank you. I'm honored to present this award on behalf of the Center on Drug Policy Evaluation in Toronto. We're presenting the Brooklyn uh, McNeil Ray of Light Award. This award honors the best research abstract on drug policy submitted to HR 19 as voted on by a panel of experts convened by Harm Reduction International. This year's award includes a 500 euro prize and a waiver for publication of the uh, research study in Harm Reduction Journal. This award is in honor of Brooklyn Ray McNeil, a harm reduction advocate who was a real force for change in Toronto, who some people in this room are privileged to know. I want to start by reading a short message from Brooklyn's mom, Thea, her dad, Dean, and her sister, Madison. Brooklyn was an advanced peer worker in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Whether on shift or in her personal life, she was a leader and a role model in the homeless youth community and a harm reduction advocate. The peer work that Brooklyn did with young people came from a place of lived experience. She was an excellent support and source of inspiration to her peers in many ways that many social workers are not. She gave people the logical, non-judgmental help they needed when she was in desperate need of it herself. She was so beautifully selfless, this being proven by her big impact on people and all the lives that she saved with her knowledge on harm reduction. Brooklyn embraced everything she did with the very best she had to offer. Being gifted with a sensitive, compassionate nature and learning hard lessons early in life as she battled with mental health and addiction helped fuel her drive in advocating for those less fortunate. This became a predominant focus and force in her life. Brooklyn was asked to give a deputation on safe injection sites in front of the Toronto Board of Health on March 21st of 2016. She had the last word and left quite an impression. On June 22, 2016, two weeks prior to the bill being passed on safe injection sites, Brooklyn accidentally overdosed in an alley all alone. If what she was fighting for was already in effect, she would not have died this way. We feel so honored and so would Brooklyn that her legacy continues with this award being in her honor. In honor of Brooklyn Ray McNeil, I'm pleased to announce that the winner of this year's Ray of Light Award is Marielle Marcaida for her abstract, Understanding the Narratives of Patero's Mother's Activism Under the Philippine Drug War. This abstract uses... Oh, <laughs> Her abstract uses qualitative methods to explore the evolving role of mothers as activists and how this has allowed them to legitimize their participation in the public sphere in a socio-political context marred by extrajudicial killings under Duterte's murderous leadership. While this abstract brought much needed insight into the realities of responding to the Philippines' horrific war on drugs, I'm really sorry to report that Marielle's visa was denied by Portuguese authorities and she was unable to present this work in person at the conference. Her absence and that of other delegates from the Philippines who were also denied visas is an unconscionable silencing of marginalized voices and it's a stark reminder of the need to continue to advocate everywhere against the stigmatization of voices from people who use drugs and those that work with them and on travel restrictions um, of those who most need to be with us here at this conference. I am, however, pleased to note um, that uh, Ma Inez Feria and Christine Mendoza will come up and accept the award on behalf of Marielle.
I just received the news that the app certainly submitted entitled Understanding the Narratives of Padera's Mother's Activism in the Philippine Black War was selected for the Brooklyn Magdalena Rio Group Award. This news is overwhelming and I dedicate this award to the mothers of Padera's who deserve every recognition there is for what they have done for the community. Unfortunately, while I am unable to accept the award personally on their, on their behalf, and I don't have enough time to visit Pateros in order to include them in the video. Let me show this picture instead. They came earlier this year during the second anniversary of the women's organization. These are the faces of hope, the mothers of Pateros who resisted the war on drugs in their community. In 2017, upon witnessing a series of drug-related killings in their neighborhood, they initiated a women's organization whose primary task was to conduct night patrols and enforce curfews on minors and street drinkers who were also potential targets of motorcycle riding gunmen. From then on, for the past two years, every night, they sacrificed rest and sleep in order to make sure that no killings would ever happen again. When no one had the courage to go out, especially the men, since they were the targets of the drug war, it was the women, the mothers, who were brave enough to serve as, as the protectors of their community. The source, the source of their bravery was their motherly concern for their loved ones, their children, their husbands, which extended their own families and basically their entire community. This award, well, it's for the mothers. They are the true recipients of this award, and I am the only one who shared their story and their research. And thank you for Harm Reduction International and Center on Drug Policy Evaluation for this recognition. Uh, I cannot wait to share this news with the mothers. The news that their stories of, about their unwavering resistance against the drug war and their limitless compassion uh, have been heard and has served as inspirations of hope. Thank you. Thank you. I'm delighted that we did get to hear from Arielle. Congratulations again to her, and we really hope to see her at the next conference.